Jean Autry, Wikipedia Audio Orvon Grover Jean Autry was an American singer-songwriter, actor, musician, rodeo performer and business tycoon who gained fame as a singing cowboy in a crooning style on radio, in movies, and on television for more than three decades beginning in the early 1930s. Autry was the owner of a television station, several radio stations in Southern California, and the Los Angeles-California-Anaheim Angels Major League Baseball team from 1961 to 1997. From 1934 to 1953, Autry appeared in 93 films, and between 1950 and 1956 hosted the Gene Autry Show television series. During the 1930s and 1940s, he personified the straight-shooting hero honest, brave, and true and profoundly touched the lives of millions of Americans. Autry was also one of the most important pioneering figures in the history of country music, considered the second major influential artist of the genre's development after Jimmy Rogers. His singing cowboy movies were the first vehicle to carry country music to a national audience. In addition to his signature song, Back in the Saddle Again, and his hit at Mail Call Today, Autry is still remembered for his Christmas holiday songs, most especially his biggest hit Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer as well as Frosty the Snowman, Here Comes Santa Claus, and Up on the Housetop. Autry was a member of both the Country Music Hall of Fame and Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, and is the only person to be awarded stars in all five categories on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, for film, television, music, radio, and live performance. The town of Gene Autry, Oklahoma was named in his honor. Life and Career Orvon Grover Autry was born September 29, 1907 near Tioga in Grayson County in North Texas, the grandson of a Methodist preacher. His parents, Delbert Autry and Elnora Osmond, moved in the 1920s to Ravia in Johnston County in southern Oklahoma. He worked on his father's ranch while at school. After leaving high school in 1925, Autry worked as a telegrapher for the St. Louis San Francisco Railway. His talent at singing and playing guitar led to performing at local dances. While working as a telegrapher, Autry would sing and accompany himself on the guitar to pass the lonely hours, especially when he had the midnight shift. This later got him fired. One night, he was encouraged to sing professionally by a customer, the famous humorist Will Rogers, who had heard him singing. As soon as he could save money to travel, he went to New York. In the autumn of 1928 he auditioned for Victor Records, shortly before purchase by David Sarnoff's RCA Corporation. According to Nathaniel Shilkrit, director of light music for Victor at the time, Autry asked to speak to Shilkrit when Autry found that he had been turned down. Shilkrit explained to Autry that he was turned down not because of his voice, but because Victor had just made contracts with two similar singers. Autry left with a letter of introduction from Shilkrit and the advice to sing on radio to gain experience and to come back in a year or two. In 1928, Autry was singing on Tulsa radio station KVOO as Oklahoma's Yodeling Cowboy. The Victor Archives show an October 9, 1929 entry stating that the vocal duet of Jimmy Long and Gene Autry with two Hawaiian guitars, directed by L. L. Watson, recorded My Dreaming of You and My Alabama. Autry signed a recording deal with Columbia Records in 1929. He worked in Chicago on the Well-Am radio show National Barn Dance for four years, and with his own show, where he met singer-songwriter Smiley Burnett. 
In his early recording career, Autry covered various genres, including a labor song, The Death of Mother Jones, in 1931. Autry also recorded many hillbilly-style records in 1930 and 1931 in New York City, which were certainly different in style and content from his later recordings. These were much closer in style to the Prairie Ramblers or Dick Justice, and included the Do Right, Daddy Blues and Black Bottom Blues, both similar to Deep Ellum Blues. These late Prohibition-era songs deal with bootlegging, corrupt police, and women whose occupation was certainly vice. These recordings are generally not heard today, but are available on European import labels, such as JSP Records. His first hit was in 1932 with That Silver-Haired Daddy of Mine, a duet with fellow railroad man, Jimmy Long, which Autry and Long C.O. wrote. Autry also sang the classic Ray Whitley hit Back in the Saddle Again, as well as many Christmas holiday songs, including Santa Claus is Coming to Town, his own composition Here Comes Santa Claus, Frosty the Snowman, and his biggest hit, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He wrote Here Comes Santa Claus after being the Grand Marshal of the 1946 Santa Claus Lane Parade. He heard all of the spectators watching the parade saying Here Comes Santa Claus, virtually handing him the title for his song. He recorded his version of the song in 1947 and it became an instant classic. Autry was the original owner of Challenge Records. The label's biggest hit was Tequila by the Champs in 1958 which started the rock and roll instrumental craze of the late 1950s and early 1960s. He sold the label soon after, but the maroon and later green label has the GA in a shield above the label name. Autry made 640 recordings, including more than 300 songs written or CO written by himself. His records sold more than 100 million copies and he has more than a dozen gold and platinum records, including the first record ever certified gold. Autry and Burnett were discovered by film producer Nat Levine in 1934. Together, Autry and Burnett made their film debut for Masket Pictures Corp. in an old Santa F.E. as part of a singing cowboy quartet. He was then given the starring role by Levine in 1935 in the 12-part serial The Phantom Empire. Shortly thereafter, Masket was absorbed by the newly formed Republic Pictures Corp. and Autry went along to make a further 44 films up to 1940, all B-Westerns in which he played under his own name, rode his horse, champion, had Burnett as his regular sidekick and had many opportunities to sing in each film. Pat Buttram was picked by Gene Autry, recently returned from his World War II service in the United States Army Air Forces, to work with him. Buttram would CO star with Gene Autry in more than 40 films and in over 100 episodes of Autry's television show. Early Years in the motion picture Herald Top 10 Money-Making Western Stars poll, Autry was listed every year from 1936 to 1942 and 1946 to 1954, holding first place 1937 to 1942, and second place 1947 to 1954. He appeared in the similar box office poll from 1936 to 1955, holding first place from 1936 to 1942 and second place from 1943 to 1952. While these two polls are really an indication only of the popularity of series stars, Autry also appeared in the top 10 money makers poll of all films from 1940 to 1942. His Gene Autry Flying A Ranch Rodeo show debuted in 1940. 
Gene Autry was the first of the singing cowboys in films, but was succeeded as the top star by Roy Rogers while Autry served in the AAF during World War II. He briefly returned to Republic to finish out his contract, which had been suspended for the duration of his military service and which he had tried to have declared void after his discharge. He appeared in 1951 in the film Texans Never Cry, with a role for newcomer Mary Castle. After 1951, Autry formed his own production company to make westerns under his own control which continued the 1947 distribution agreement with Columbia Pictures. Autry purchased the 110-acre monogram movie ranch in 1953, in Placerita Canyon near Newhall, California, in the northern San Gabriel Mountains foothills. He renamed it the Melody Ranch after his movie Melody Ranch. Autry then sold 98 acres of the property, most of the original ranch. The western town, adobes, and ranch cabin sets and open land for location shooting were retained as a movie ranch on 12 acres. A decade after he purchased Melody Ranch, a brush fire swept through in August 1962, destroying most of the original standing sets. However, the devastated landscape did prove useful for productions such as combat. A complete adobe ranch survived at the northeast section of the ranch. In 1990, after his favorite horse champion, which lived in retirement there, died, Autry put the remaining 12-acre ranch up for sale. It is now known as the Melody Ranch Motion Picture Studio and Melody Ranch Studios on 22 acres. The ranch has Melody Ranch Museum open year-round, and one weekend a year, the entire ranch is open to the public during the Cowboy Poetry and Music Festival, another legacy of Autry's multiple talents. From 1940 to 1956, Autry had a huge hit with a weekly show on CBS radio, Gene Autry's Melody Ranch. His horse, Champion, also had a CBS TV and mutual radio series, The Adventures of Champion. In response to his many young radio listeners aspiring to emulate him, Autry created the Cowboy Code, or Ten Cowboy Commandments. These tenets promoting an ethical, moral, and patriotic lifestyle that appealed to youth organizations such as the Boy Scouts, which developed similar doctrines. The Cowboy Code consisted of rules that were a natural progression of Gene's philosophies going back to his first Melody Ranch programs and early pictures. According to the Code Beginning in 1950, he produced and starred in his own television show on CBS through his Flying A Productions studio and made several appearances on ABC TV's Jubilee USA in the late 1950s. During World War II, Autry enlisted in the United States Army in 1942, and became a tech sergeant in the United States Army Air Forces. Holding a private pilot certificate, he was determined to become a military pilot and earned his service pilot rating in June 1944, serving as a C-109 transport pilot with the rank of flight officer. Assigned to a unit of the Air Transport Command, he flew as part of the dangerous airlift operation over the Himalayas between India and China, nicknamed the Hump. Singing Career Film career Few are aware of Autry's long-time involvement in professional rodeo. In 1942, at the height of his screen popularity, Autry had a string of rodeo stock based in Ardmore, Oklahoma. A year later, he became a partner in the World Championship Rodeo Company, which furnished livestock for many of the country's major rodeos. In 1954, 
he acquired Montana's top bucking string from the estate of Leo J. Creamer, Sr., and put Canadian saddle bronc riding champion Harry Knight in charge of the operation. A merger with the World Championship Rodeo Company in 1956 made Autry the sole owner. He moved the entire company to a 24,000-acre ranch near Fowler, Colorado, with Knight as the working partner in the operation. For the next 12 years, they provided livestock for most of the major rodeos in Texas, Colorado, Montana, and Nebraska. When the company was sold in 1968, both men continued to be active in rodeo. For his work as a livestock contractor, Autry was inducted into the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association's Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 1979. Autry actually received several honors for his contributions to rodeo. Melody Ranch Radio and television career Military career Rodeo Honors Autry retired from show business in 1964, having made almost 100 films up to 1955 and over 600 records. He was elected to the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1969 and to the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1970. After retiring, he invested widely and in real estate, radio, and television. He also invested in ownership of the Cool TV CBS affiliate in Phoenix, Arizona, which created local shows such as the weekly bilingual children's show Ninos Contentos. He also purchased the rights from the Dying Republic pictures for films he had made for the company. In 1952, Autry bought the old Monogram Ranch in Placerita Canyon and renamed it Melody Ranch. Numerous B-Westerns and TV shows were shot there during Autry's ownership, including the initial years of Gunsmoke with James Arness. Melody Ranch burned down in 1962 dashing Autry's plans to turn it into a museum. According to a published story by Autry, the fire caused him to turn his attention to Griffith Park, where he would build his Museum of Western Heritage. Melody Ranch came back to life after 1991, when it was purchased by the Veluzat family and rebuilt. It survives as a movie location today as well as the home of the city of Santa Clarita's annual Cowboy Festival, where Autry's legacy takes center stage. In the 1950s, Autry had been a minority owner of the minor league Hollywood Stars. In 1960, when Major League Baseball announced plans to add an expansion team in Los Angeles, Autry who had once declined an opportunity to play in the minor leagues expressed an interest in acquiring the radio broadcast rights to the team's games. Baseball executives were so impressed by his approach that he was persuaded to become the owner of the franchise rather than simply its broadcast partner. The team, initially called the Los Angeles Angels upon its 1961 debut, moved to suburban Anaheim in 1966, and was renamed the California Angels, then the Anaheim Angels from 1997 until 2005, when it became the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Autry served as vice president of the American League from 1983 until his death. In 1995, he sold a quarter share of the team to the Walt Disney Company and a controlling interest the following year, with the remaining share to be transferred after his death. Earlier, in 1982, he sold Los Angeles television station KTLA for $245 million. He also sold several radio stations he owned, including KSFO in San Francisco. KMPC in Los Angeles, KOGO in San Diego, and other stations in the Golden West Radio Network. 
Retirement The number 26 was retired by the angels in Autry's honor. The chosen number reflected that baseball's rosters are 25 man strong, so Autry's unflagging support for his team made him the 26th member. Gene Autry died of lymphoma on October 2, 1998, three days after his 91st birthday at his home in Studio City, California. He was buried at the Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills Cemetery in Los Angeles. His epitaph read, America's Favorite Cowboy American Hero, Philanthropist, Patriot and Veteran, Movie Star Singer, composer, baseball fan and owner, 33rd degree mason, media entrepreneur, loving husband, gentleman. In 1932, Autry married Ina May Spivy, the niece of Jimmy Long. After she died in 1980, he married Jacqueline Ellum, who had been his banker, in 1981. He had no children by either marriage. Autry was raised into Freemasonry in 1927 at Catoosa Lodge No. 185, Catoosa, Oklahoma. He later became a 33rd degree Master Mason, as recorded on his headstone. On November 16, 1941, the town of Berwyn, Oklahoma, north of Ardmore, was renamed in honor of Jean Autry. In 1972, he was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Autry was a life member of the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks, Burbank Lodge No. 1497. His 1976 autobiography, CO written by Mickey Herskowitz, was titled Back in the Saddle Again after his 1939 hit and signature tune. He is also featured year after year on radio and shopping mall music at the holiday season, by his recording of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph became the first number one hit of the 1950s. In 2003, he was ranked number 38 in CMTS list of the 40 greatest men of country music. When the Anaheim Angels won their first World Series in 2002, much of the championship was dedicated to him. The interchange of Interstate 5 and State Route 134 near the Autry National Center in Los Angeles, is signed as the Gene Autry Memorial Interchange. In 2007, he became a charter member of the Janet Records Walk of Fame in Richmond, Indiana. Baseball Johnny Cash recorded a song in 1978 about Autry called Who is Gene Autry? Cash also got Autry to sign his famous Black Martin D35 guitar, which he plays in the video of Hurt. In 1977, Autry was awarded the American Patriots Medal by Freedom's Foundation of Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Other winners of this medal were Helen Hayes, John Wayne, and Texas State Representative Clay Smothers. Death Autry was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2003. In 2004, the Stars Entertainment Corporation joined forces with the Autry estate to restore all of his films, which have been shown on Stars's Encore Western channel on cable television on a regular basis to date since. Autry was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame in 1991. Personal Life Legacy Hollywood Walk of Fame Autry is the only person to have five stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one in each of the five categories defined by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. All of Autry's stars are located along Hollywood Boulevard, 
recording at 6384, radio at 6520, motion pictures at 6644, television at 6667, and live theater at 7000, Hollywood Boulevard. His first four stars were placed during the initial inductions of 1960 while the final one was placed in 1987, in the additional category named Live Theater later renamed Live Performance introduced in 1984. The Museum of the American West in Los Angeles Griffith Park was founded in 1988 as the Gene Autry Western Heritage Museum featuring much of his collection of Western art and memorabilia. It is now called the Autry National Center and is divided into two locations, eight miles apart from each other. Its mission is to present the unique and diverse perspectives of the American West, including the romanticized West in pop culture and the real nuanced history, including native and minority voices. From 1934 to 1953, Jean Autry appeared in 93 films. From 1950 to 1955, he also appeared in 91 episodes of the Jean Autry Show television series. As of 2014, a large number of these films and television episodes remain available via the Jean Autry Foundation on the Western Channel the latter having collaborated with the Foundation to restore the Republic titles, which had been cut to a uniform 54 minutes for television release in the 1950s, to full length and to provide clean negative-based source prints for all the titles in the 1990s. The Museum of the American West Discography Albums Singles 1930s 1940s 1950s 1990s Filmography